Okay. Hi, everyone. Please excuse my appearance. I am super beautiful today. <laughs> okay. Um, I promised a precious brother that I would do this video. And it's, it's time. It's been a couple of months. I'm horrible. I know. I want to talk to you about predestination. Um, there's a couple of, there's a couple, there's some issues. He might find this video interesting. He might. Okay. There are some scriptures that, if you read them, it sounds like everything is predestined and you have no free will. That who's going to be saved is going to be saved because it's predestined. Like we don't have free choice. So it sounds like that. It seems like that. Then there's scriptures saying everybody has choice and there's free will and stuff like that. And, um, you are judged based on your choice, your free will. So then the question comes to mind to most people who arrive here at this predicament, this, this, you know, perception of a predicament. Well, if we're judged on our choice, but there is no choice because there's no free will, everything's predestined, then God's judgment can't be accurate, can't be just. Well, there's some issues with, with this whole thing. There's also scriptures talking about um, how we go, when we die, you know, we go to hell. Um, Sheol or Hades, the grave. There's some scriptures talking about how, um, even with Jesus on the cross, one of the uh, thieves next to him, Jesus stated to him that this day, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. But there's also scriptures talking about <laughs> how um, the dead know nothing. The dead hear nothing, see nothing, and know nothing. There's scriptures talking about, so I mean, if they're in hell, I mean, how are they not knowing anything and, you know, seeing anything and hearing anything? They're in hell. But if you're in paradise, right away, as soon as you die, if you go to paradise, heaven, well, how do the dead know nothing, see nothing, and hear nothing? There seems to be some contradictions here, right? But mm -mm -mm, I'm going to tell you something. It's going to just fix everything. Absolutely fix everything. For the glory of Jesus, our beloved. So, <laughs> there's all other scriptures talking about how the dead sleep in the ground and they know nothing, right? Okay, okay, let's get back to it. And so, there seems to be contradiction, but there's not. Now, when I got saved, I ran into this conundrum myself, and the Holy Spirit immediately gave me the answer and explained it to me. And plus, uh, my previous experiences in the astral as a New Ager and whatnot, experiencing um, the dark spiritual realm. Yes, my cat is clinging to me. Yes. This is my little, my little kitty cat. Her name is Bonita. Short. We call her Boonie for short. So if you see, if you see a cat hugging on me, I have a cat necklace. <laughs> in various videos. That is why. Okay. Now, let's talk about predestination and free will and the scriptures and the word of God, okay? Many of you already know the scriptures I was referring to, and I wasn't quoting them verbatim, but you, you already know. You've already been there. Many, many of you have had the same question, and there are some of you that the Holy Spirit has given the answer to, but not everybody's making videos on it, right? So I'm going to make a video on it. Now, Here's what's going to really tickle you, tickle, 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 tickle. It's going gonna, it's gonna to excite you. It's gonna, it, the answer, the explanation is just, it's amazing. Um, not to tickle ears or anything with lies. No, 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 no. What I'm about to tell you is going to explain predestination and free will and the judgment and what happens and why the Word of God says things about death. And, and it seems like it's contradicting itself, but it's not. Because once I explain this to you, which is not that easy to do, but I'll do it, Lord willing. Then you'll understand it all. It'll be, ow, really awesome. She likes to bite, too. Likes to nibble. She's got teeth. Okay. Just follow along with me while I explain this, because it's not easy to put into words. But it can be done. Almighty God, the Most High, the Holiest of the Holies, Yahuwah, you might call him Yahweh, I call him El Shaddai, but I'm talking about the God 
of all creation, the source of all life, the source of all consciousness. consciousness. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moshe, Moses. The one who gave mankind, specifically Adam and his lineage, his seed, his promise, his word, that he would save at Abraham's seed. When God gives his word, he literally means that. His word came down in the flesh and saved all those who consent to be saved. And even us Gentiles who could be grafted in to the bosom of the seed, the tree of Abraham, adopted out of the dead tree of Adam. Almighty God, he is not human. If you really ponder on that, it'll blow your mind and terrify you. He's not human. Mm. He's far superior. Time, and time matters in this situation that we're discussing here. He's not subject to time, correct? He is not in the past or the future. He is in the now, right now. And to hear the voice of Jesus in prayer, in meditation, you must be in the now. You cannot be worried about yesterday or tomorrow. You have to be right now in the now, Jesus says. There is no amount of worry that will add any, any time to any length of life to you. That you have your own troubles for today. Your troubles are sufficient for the day. Don't be worried about tomorrow. Don't be overtaken with it. Don't be consumed by it, right? You need to be in the now to hear the voice of the Lord, by the way. Now. The nowness. Can't be thinking about the past, worried about the future and all that. Focus on the now moment. Right now. That's where God is. That's where the Most High is in His Spirit operates in the now. Now, Holy Yahuwah, I am, He is not perceiving of time. He perceives of it. He knows all things. He doesn't perceive of time the same way that you and I do. We're at a time lag. I know, just stick with me because it's going to pay off and you'll be so glad. I promise you. We perceive of time. We're limited by it. Our own conscious awareness is bound to time. So it's very difficult to detach from the past and, and detach from worries of the future, etc. And I'm talking about this for a reason. This okay. God is in the now, which means... All that has ever happened in the past, our perceived past, all that is happening right now, our perception of now, all that, ha that will come to pass in our perception of fu the future has already happened, is already happening right now before the face of the Most High. Do you understand what I'm saying? How come the Word of God says... That your name, all the names of those who are destined for eternal life, that your names, you've been predestined, your name has been written in the, in the book of life from the founding of the earth. So, and even um, King David wrote and talked about how he knew us even before we were in the belly of our mothers. He knew our names. Because God Almighty is in the now forever in the perfect eternal eternity of nowness every every single thing that has ever happened that is happening and that shall happen has already happened and is simultaneously happening in the now with the most high his perception of time he's looking at all of history now and future at the same time. The holy, wonderful, powerful, blessed Spirit of God. 
that comes upon us as believers is a port of God. Holy Spirit sees the same way God sees. Holy Spirit is part of God. So when a man, a beloved man, brother, or beloved sister, woman of God, writes from the Holy Spirit of God, what he or she sees may be covering things from the past, our perceived past, our perceived now, and or what we shall perceive in the future. Hence why the spirit of Jesus being saved is the spirit of prophecy. For we get the spirit, Holy Spirit of God, which is eternally in the now. So I can speak on this as a testimony. I am testifying to you right now what I'm telling you is fact. I'm telling you because I know the Lord has given me the gift of prophecy. So the Holy Spirit has given me the sight. So I've experienced this over and over and over and over again. Where the Holy Spirit of God is not limited to time. Holy Spirit is one with God. Is not limited to time. Is immortal. Timeless. Outside of the realms, the spectrums, and limitations of time. Now why does this matter? How does this explain all these scriptures that seem to contradict which do not? When a beloved person in the Lord dies one of our brothers, sisters. From our perspective of time, they've died. From our perspective of time, that dead brother or sister is sleeping. Death has lost its sting. Knows nothing, hears nothing, sees nothing. From our perspective of time, we are caught in the wake. But from God's perspective, that person's already already with him. The person lived, breathed, born, lived, breathed, and died instantly. And is with him now. From God, the Most High's perspective, this whole world is ended. As we know it. Yes. All of it. All of us have died. And all of us, who we are where we're supposed to be. Either Sheol the lake of fire, all of it's been done. So from the beginning, since he knows everything, all the end at the beginning, and all the beginning at the end, because he's in the eternal nowness, he knows you, he knows me, he knows our names, they've been written because it's already, it's already happened. All of it has already happened. You getting saved, you watching this video right now, it's already happened. That's how come we can read in the word of God that Jesus said to the thief on the cross next to him, I tell you truly, today you shall be with me in paradise. Because it's true. All things are happening in one instant. We just perceive of it through time. We're bound by time. Think of it as, um, think of it like uh, you're in a tunnel. And you're speaking and there's echoes. We're living in one of the echoes. And the echoes bounce at the wall and come back and you hear it. The word of God tells us that the Holy Father says that all things shall come to pass according to his word. And shall not return to him void. All things will be fulfilled. What God perceives, he perceives when he speaks it, it exists instantly. Even be, and it's already happened before it even bounces off the wall and returns to him. That's how come, when it returns to him, it's, it's fulfilled. It's not void. Understand? There is no predestination. There is free will. We're just experiencing living out the free will. God's already seen it. He knows all things. He's already seen all of your choices via your free will. He already knows who's his children and who isn't. He already knows who shall be beheaded for the testimony of our beloved Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. He already knows who's going to turn their backs. Yes, that's what scares me. See, if I pray for something and I know everything I ask for in the mighty name of Jesus, he gives. He, he is good. He is perfect to his word. He keeps his word. And if something isn't being given to me, 
And I'm worried, like, am I, do, am I one that turns away from you, Lord? Is that why you're withholding from me, because I'm not really yours? That's what I worry about. Ooh, keeps me on my toes, because he knows who's his. He answers the prayers of those who are his children, and he knows who his children are. But those who see no, no, no supernatural, nothing in their lives, he doesn't really, he doesn't answer their prayers, they feel alone. It might can be because they're not really his. They're going to turn away from him anyway. You should be concerned. If you're not hearing his voice, if you're not experiencing the supernatural movement of God's finger in your life and the Holy Spirit, you might not be called to be one of his. Or you might be called to be one of his, but you need to step your game up. You need to be obedient. You need to repent for some stuff. That's another video. See, God knows who's his. All Everything that's ever happened that ever will happen, has already happened from his perspective, from his viewpoint on time. He's outside of it. He can see all of it in one go. Understand? So, when the Holy Word of God, written by the Holy Spirit, through various brothers, writes about how those who die, see nothing, hear nothing, know nothing, this particular writer is speaking from a perspective of time. Hours. From our perspective of time, say my uncle passes away, my uncle is not hearing anything, seeing nothing, nothing, he knows nothing, he is sleeping. Okay, he's at rest. He's in the peace of the Lord. So the word of God teaches us, hey, Jesus said that, surely I tell you, truly I tell you, you will be with me in paradise to the thief on the cross. Yet we're told that they rest in peace. Well, how can you be in peace if you're in paradise? Well, yeah, you can say there's a, there's a, you know, it makes sense. But the peace talking about here is resting. Knowing nothing, hearing nothing, seeing nothing. No more stresses, no more sorrows, no more sufferings of this mortal coil. Right? How could that be true, yet we're with the Lord in paradise when we die? People are having near-death experiences, coming back, describing how they went to heaven. Yet we're told those people aren't put in heaven until the judgment. That's when they receive their judgment of where they're going to go. We're, we're in lingo. We're waiting. There's different interpretations of what the Word says here. And so some of these scriptures sound really truly like they're in contradiction, but they're not. It all depends on what perspective of time are you perceiving from. Keeping in mind that the Holy Spirit's perception of time is God's perception of time unless to reveal to us more information which is power knowledge is power to give us more information the Holy Spirit inspired precious brothers in the past to write our holy words the holy word of God from a way that would benefit us from our point of perspective in time so here let me just reiterate and run through it real point of bottom you know bottom line point of factly from our perspective, when we die, we know nothing, hear nothing, see nothing. We're not in paradise yet. We have to wait to the judgment, the end of time. But from God's perspective, it's all happened already. You're with him already. You understand? All this, my whole life has come and gone. I'm dead. I'm in him. I'm already judged. The end has already come. The judgment has already happened. Jesus is with his bride and the children. He's in his kingdom now but not from our point of perspective of time. From our perspective of time, we're in one of the wakes, the echoes, waiting to meet up with the Most High. We're at a time lag between us and God right now. We're still experiencing time. Yes, there's a time lag, right? Many of you already know, but for the sakes of those who don't, a thousand years from our perspective of time is nothing but a day to God. It's all the same day to Him. But it's like a long duration of time from our experience, our perspective of experience, right? Do you see what I'm saying? This is how free will and predestination explained, understand? Predestination, if there is, if predestination, and you have to understand what I mean when I say that. The basic definition of predestination is something along the lines of you have no choice. Everything's decided for you. It's already done. You're just living it out. You're going through the motions. You have no free will. It's all up to you to just, it's not up to you, rather. You're just going on, you're on a ride and you're not even driving. 
So then the whole concept of predestination um, is actually a heresy. Because the Most High God is perfect and holy and perfect and just. He does not predestine you to fail and sin and then punish you for it. To teach of a predestination to be fact is to teach against the entire personality of who God is, who is the author of the Bible, the Holy Word of God. Get what I'm saying? So predestination is just toss it out the window. The only reason why there seems to be a premise for it is because of certain scriptures describing how our names are written in the book of life from the founding of the earth, from the beginning of time. The beginning of what? Time. Perception of time. Um, because that's true. All has come to pass already. Everything. The very next breath I'm going to take, the very next breath you're going to take, all of it's already happened from the perspective of God. I hope that what I just explained, which is not easy to explain really, um, has brought insight to you and your understanding so you can, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? So that you can reconcile these scriptures understanding, oh, okay. So the Holy Spirit has taught us from various points of perspective of time. Showing us God's perspective versus our own. And it takes discernment to understand the truth of God, to know God, and to know the time. And okay, that's where the Holy Spirit's coming from when the Holy Spirit says this versus saying that. None of it contradicts because all of it is true at the same time. And that's what's confusing to a lot of people because they have to understand time, reality, space, and matter. Okay. Um, God.